Thank you everyone for joining us today. Happy to have you here for our CAFE webinar. Today I'll be demonstrating how to score entries as a juror on CAFE. If you're joining us today as a juror from an upcoming call, you'll see everything you need to know about using CAFE to jury a call for entry. If you're joining us as an administrator, this will give you an inside look at the jury process and what your jurors will expect. So the key items that we will cover today include logging in as a juror, viewing, sorting, and searching for applications, and then scoring applications using each scorecard view, which is the list view, the slideshow view, and the grid view. So the first step of the jury process is logging in. The call administrator is responsible for setting up each juror's username and password and assigning the juror to the call. In order to log in, you'll need this information from them. So log in at admin.callforentry.org, which is where we're here at the top. This is the same login page that administrators use to log in and jurors. There's a separate login for artists, but both of you log into here. You'll enter your username and the password that the call administrator set up for you. If you need to reset or set up your own password, you can use that forgot password um, feature at the bottom here to reset your own password. And then you can log in. And before we get to this page, I will go quickly to this page to show you that the first time you're a juror and you log in, you will actually get to this page first and we'll have to choose one of these methods before you move on to the jury page. So just to let you know, the first time you log in with your account, you'll be greeted with this page. And this is for the multi-factor authentication, also referred to as MFA. As with many websites, CAFE has implemented MFA to add an extra layer of protection to your account. This ensures only the one who is set up with the account can log in. And you'll have three options for multi-factor authentication. The first is email, where you'll get the authentication code sent to your email address each time you log in. Authenticator app, where you get the authentication code sent to an app on your phone, such as Google Authenticator, Microsoft Authenticator, LastPass, Duo. There's several apps out there. Or the Remind Me Later option. This just means that MFA will be disabled for your account and you'll be reminded in two weeks if you want to enable it. So I chose this option here so that it doesn't ask me of code every time I'm logging in for this period but I recommend setting it up to add that extra layer of protection. If you ever want to change your method, once you log into your juror account, you just click on the top right here, this little account icon and go to the profile page and that will take you to the page we are here, or you can click either of the options to change, or maybe if you're gonna be in and out of cafe for a while and you don't wanna deal with the MFA code, you can simply click remind me later and that will disable the MFA step. Once logged in, you'll be taken to the juror scorecard page. If you're not already there, what you'll want to do is click on the jury tab from the left-hand side and then click on the jury sub tab. And this will take you to the jury homepage. Now, if you get to this page and see the following error message, which we have here in red, which says you have not been assigned to a call, so we will not be able to view or score applicants. Contact the call administrator to resolve the issue. That means the call administrator set up your juror account, obviously, because you logged in, but did not assign you to the call itself. So for any administrators here today, this is the jury access I'm referring to, where you have to go to the juror's profile and check the box next to the name of the call they are assigned to score. Now, I'm not gonna show this on screen today because I don't wanna confuse future jurors or any current ju jurors here, but behind the scenes, what I'm gonna do right now is go in as an administrator and assign our juror account to this call. So once I've done that, what I'm gonna do is refresh the page here with our juror account. And you'll see we've got a little update. We actually have a new error message and this is all intentional. The error message here is these jur juries are not in progress. You'll not be able to view or score applicants. Contact the call administrator for more information. So you can also see here that if I go to select the name of the call from the top, all of these call names are grayed out. This is because the jury status for each of these calls are not yet set to 
in progress. They're currently set to not yet started. So administrators listening, this is how you can see that if a juror logs in and they see this error message, they can't start scoring until you set your jury status to in progress. Now, again, behind the scenes, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to set our demo calls here to in progress. Um, I just wanted to set up those error messages to show you what it looks like when the juror logs in and might not be able to score yet. So give me just a second to update these on our back end. I'll come back here and I'm going to refresh our page again. You'll see that error message went away. And when we go to the top here, each one of these calls I can now click on. If you're a juror here and you're only during one call, which is probably more likely that you only have to go to CAFE to, to score one call at a time, you might only see one call. And in that case, you won't actually see this drop down menu. You'll just see the name of the call here at the top. So this is to show you if you are assigned to multiple calls, you can then click which one you're going to score at the top here next to current event. This is a good time for me to mention before we move forward that in order to use the jury scorecard and all of its features, you'll need to make sure you're, you disable your browser's pop-up windows. So um, some browsers have a pop-up blocker that's enabled that prevents pop-up windows from appearing. But if you are jurying for a cafe, you're going to want to make sure you disable that pop-up blocker, otherwise known as enabling pop-ups. Um, so that you can have full access to the scorecard. And if you don't, then you might run into what appears to be some technical problems, but it might just be your pop-up blocker. Especially if you use Safari as your browser, you'll definitely need to check on your pop-up blocker because Safari tends to um, block Cafe's pop-ups by default. So just be sure to check on that. Um, if you ever need assistance from us as a juror, you can contact us. As an administrator, you can contact us. And I'll talk about towards the end of the webinar exactly how to get in touch with us. Um, but feel free to do that if you can't seem to see all the things we're going to be showing you today. So I'll go ahead and select our first event that I'll show you from the top here. Once you select it, you'll see the table, the applicant table, which shows the number of applications in each category. And if your call does not have separate categories set up, you'll just see this one row here for applications. This table will show you the number of scored, unscored, and then the total number of applications for this call. You can click any of these numbers here in that category to open up the scorecard for that batch of applications. Some choose to go and score by category separately, or maybe you're a juror that's specifically assigned to one category only. This is how you can access those, by clicking on the number. Or you can click on the total number, and that will just show you everything that's in the jury. So before we get to the actual scorecard, I'm going to show you around this little landing page a little bit more. So in order for me to open up the rest of the landing page, I'm going to go ahead and click on our total number of applications. And you'll see when I did that, it did open up the scorecard. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and close that so I can show you back on this page. So you'll see when I click on the number that the pop-up happens. And so that pop-up window is the one of two things that should happen when you click on the number. So the pop-up window with the scorecard opens and this table of applications appears. If you click on this number and you only see this table appear and you don't see a separate window open up with the scorecard, that is an indication that the pop-up blocker is prohibiting the pop-up. So you'll want to make sure you check on that because that scorecard is the intentional workflow for scoring. This table is simply um, an additional element, um, but I will show you how you can score through this table as well. So as you can see here, this table of applications lists all of the applications at once. You can kind of see a thumbnail of the images at a glance and you can use it before you start scoring to kind of get a good sense of what's entered or you can do it afterwards to review your scores. This table will list your score in this column and any comments you created in addition to any tags that the call administrator might have assigned the application beforehand. Um, so this gives you a little bit more info at a glance for the applications. This table is all sortable um, by the column heading. So you can click on any of the column, head column headings to sort ascending or descending. So um, you can click on category to sort that. You can click it again to sort it the other way. 
Same thing with, you know, tags, or especially when you start scoring, you can sort this table by clicking on the score heading, and that will allow you to see in order of how you've scored the entries, um, you know, how many entries you've scored a certain way. Up here in the search or filter by box, you can actually select a score under this filter option here. And that will enable you to show in this table once you click go, it will show you any of the scores scored that certain way. Obviously right now we don't have any scores entered, so it's not gonna show it. I'll go ahead and click reset to reset this table. Um, but you can use this to filter out rather than just sorting it. You can filter out um, to see all of the entries based on a certain score. And you can also search for any applications in this box by the name. Um, if it's grayed out like this, that means it's a blind jury and you can't actually see the name. So there wouldn't be any purpose searching for it. Um, you can search by app ID or artist ID. Maybe the administrator wants you to take a look at that specific application. So they might give you the ID number and you can search for it that way. You can also filter this table by specific category. So let's say you only want to see the 2D art. In addition to just clicking on the number up here that will reset this table, you can click category 2D art and you can combine this with any other search features. If you want to show only the tagged applications that administrators tagged, you can show those only. So this will show you, you know, these are the tags created. And same goes for any applications that the administrator might have flagged. So flag is just another way of kind of notating the application. So you can click show flagged applications only, click go, and it will show you only applications that the administrator had flagged. And then also on this table, what you can do is click on the thumbnail image to enlarge it. What that actually does is open the scorecard for it, depending on the scorecard view, which is what we will go over in a little bit. Um, so that will take you there. You can also click the score button on the right-hand side under the actions column. If you click score, it will also open up that scorecard. Now, once you actually score, which I can show you what it looks like afterwards, once you put in your score, this score link will actually change to review. So it essentially will reopen the scorecard to allow you to review your score that you've already entered or maybe change it. That's a little bit about that landing page. Um, I'll now go over how to score the applications. As a juror, you've logged in, you've maybe reviewed the entries at the table. When you're ready to begin scoring, you'll click on the number of applications from the applicant table that you wanna start with. So either by category or total. So I'll go ahead and re-click on this total number. So this will pull up the scorecard just like we saw before. Now, CAFE actually has three different scorecard view options. The scorecard view you have is predetermined by the administrator. And while they allow you each to score the entries, each scorecard view has different ways of viewing them. So I will go over each one in this webinar to show you how to use each one so that you'll know what to expect no matter which one is chosen. The first scorecard view I am showing you right now is list view. This scorecard view displays a list of up to 20 entries on one page against a white background. And so once you click on the total number, the scorecard opens. And as you can see, we have it in a separate tab here where it's a list one after another. It's all against this white background. And you can scroll through at least the first 20. If you have less than 20, it'll show you all of them. If you have more than 20, you'll have multiple pages. And we'll go to the top here. You can see that each scorecard is, is kind of combined here. So you can see the artist information at the top. The artist's name will be at the top if it's not a blind jury. You'll see the work samples, including the thumbnail image, the artist statement if they um, have an artist statement for their application, and then the score and comment section. And in addition to the blind jury thing that I mentioned, it's important to note that some other information, um, maybe some form answers, which we'll go over, might be hidden by the call administrator because they might decide to hide that from the jury. Um, so all the information that is here is what's available. I will also point out that depending on the type of call being juried, you may see that the scorecard here consists of one image like we're seeing here or multiple images grouped together. So if it's multiple images grouped together, you're giving one score to the entire body of work. 
If you just see one image, it's giving one score to each individual piece of artwork. So for administrators listening, this is that difference between scoring by art calls and scoring by application calls. All right, let's get into this itself. To use the scorecard, you can first review the information at a glance, which is what we're doing. You can click view form answers and that will bring up any answers to application questions that the administrator set up and had artists answer. So there could be several questions here. There might be no questions here. So it just depends on how the application was set up. Um, if you have any, um, if there are any questions about, you know, resumes or files that artists needed to upload, those will be listed here and you can just click to download and view those. And you can click back to scorecard once you've done reviewing them. You can click on the thumbnail image to enlarge the image. So this will give you that full view. If you hover over the image, you'll see this eye icon, which you can then click and it will show you the artwork information that the artist entered when they uploaded their, their artwork. So those are things like the title, medium dimensions, et cetera. Again, some of this information might be hidden from the call administrators, such as you know price sometimes is hidden or things like that. So you can review the artwork information here. And when you're ready to close it, you can just close that tab and it'll bring you back to the scorecard. And if the artist entered the artist statement, you can click to read more to view the entire statement. And then finally, go ahead and input your score and any comments. So you might say something like, um, you know, any comment you want. This, um, the comments cannot be seen by artists but it can be seen by administrators. So administrators can reference um, maybe for some selections of prize winners or anything like that, or if the juror just wants to make note of some comments um, and then at the discretion of the administrator and the juror share those with the artist individually, but artists cannot see these comments. Once you enter your score, you can just click save my score and that will save. It will also scroll the list down to the next entry. Um, definitely make sure you click save my score after each score. There is a save button at the very bottom of this page after the 20 entries to save all of them at once. But I highly recommend saving the score after each one because that allows you to ensure that you're saving as you go. And if you accidentally close the tab or if you walk away, then all your scores are being saved. If you need to erase your score, what you'll do is just click erase your score and that will set it back to blank once you click save my score. Another thing about the score is that this scoring rating is also determined by the administrator. So they will either set it to what we have here, which is yes, no, maybe, or it might be set to one to seven or one through 20. So you will just have to score depending on what the administrator set up for you. And then, like I said at the bottom, once you've scored all of the 20 entries, you will click save and continue scoring. Um, if you're done and you're at the end of the list, or maybe you want to just save and come back later, you can click save and return to overview page. Um, what that will do is save and it's gonna take a little bit and then it will just close that window. And then to confirm that all of your scores are saved properly, you'll see that this um, scoring list will update. Um, I erased that one score we did do, so it was be zero. Let me actually go ahead just to show you what I'll do is I'll click um, on this and I will score this. Um, I'll just write comments here. I'll click save. And if I return back to this page, you'll see it's been updated with our one scored entry. The score is noted here as well as my, as well as my comments. So that's how you can keep track of your progress. So those are the steps for how to score applications if list view was selected by the call administrator. I will now show you how to view and score them if the slideshow view was selected. So let me switch up our calls here. Slideshow view displays a pop-up window, again, of the individual scorecards, but this time as a slideshow one at a time against a gray background. The first difference you'll notice if using slideshow view is when you first log in and select the call. What you'll see here is we have this additional option here, which is the scorecard view preference. So this gives the jurors an additional option um, to customize their view. 
And this is only available for slideshow view scorecards. So I'll go over briefly what each one looks like. So first we have the preview slideshow. So I'll select that. And then I'm gonna click on the number of the applications again to actually open that scorecard. You'll see it's a pop-up window that begins with the first image of the um, for the first artist in that selected group of applicants. So you'll select the number and it'll pull this up and you'll see it's just the enlarged image of the artwork. So if I then click next, next, you'll just see it's uh, all of the enlarged images that were submitted to this call. Um, so it's just a combination of all the applicants at once. This just allows you to kind of quickly scan through the images submitted and will give you a good sense of what was entered for this call. So that's preview slideshow. Our next slideshow view is the thumbnail scorecard. So I will click on that and then I'll click on the total number again to pull that up. The thumbnail scorecard will show a pop-up window that displays the thumbnails of the image or the images submitted along with the scorecard itself. So you'll see that this is similar to list view. However, this one's on a gray background. And instead of being able to scroll down to the next one, it's just one at a time. And it'll show the next one as soon as you finish scoring. So as you could, again, you can click to view form answers that will pull up the application questions. You can click the thumbnail image to enlarge it. And once you're in here, you just can click through the arrows for all of them and then it'll bring you back to the scorecard when you're done. And you can view the artist statement, same thing that we saw before. You can see that for this call, it's set up to one through seven. So you'll just enter your score for whichever one um, you are scoring it, enter any comments, and then click save my score. Once you click save, it'll take you to the next scorecard for the next application. Um, the other difference you can see for this call that we're looking at, um, this is one of those where the images are grouped together per application. So we're assigning one score for this body of work. So just a heads up, you might see it look like this or it'll look like how we saw before with only one. And if you want to click through or skip, you can increase this number at the bottom right here where it says application number blank of six. You can just, you know, increase this number to view. Maybe you want to view the last one then click go and it'll take you to that last application. So once you have finished scoring all of them or, you know, whenever you're done, as long as you're saving my score along the way, you can close that. And that is that thumbnail scorecard. The last option is the slideshow scorecard. So I'll click that. The slideshow scorecard will display a pop-up window that begins with the first enlarged image for the first artist in that selected group that you clicked on. Um, you'll see here how you can view the art and its details just like before. And it'll show you a slideshow of all of those images. And then this time, once you've get, gotten to that last image, it'll actually take you to the scorecard for that entry. You'll enter your score, any comments, and then click save. Then you'll see it takes you to the enlarged image of the next application. So um, you can click through that and it'll take you at the end back to the scorecard for that. So this kind of allows you to first view the enlarged images before you're taken to the rest of the application and its information. Um, it just kind of gives you an introduction into that artist's application before you go ahead and score it. So, you know, that's just kind of one workflow that some folks like. And so that's an option there. And once you're done, you can close that as well. You can see we did score that one application and that it's um, recorded here on this, on this table. So those are the three scorecard preferences for the slideshow view. Again, slideshow view is the setting that the administrator will set up on the jury administration page. And then as a juror, you have these additional options to customize your own view. So that's slideshow view. The third and final scorecard option that the call administrator may select for you is the grid view. So I'm going to switch to our call here that has the grid view set up. Grid view displays a grid of the 20 thumbnail images with scoring options underneath. This is only available for calls that are during each image separately rather than as a body of work. So once we click on the number of entries, um, instead of a pop-up window, this is the only time that 
it won't automatically open. Now that's because the scorecard is here in the grid below. So it will show you to up to 20 entries per page and you can use the bottom here to click to the next page of entries. Um, or click back. You can also increase the number. If you do want to see all of them at once on one page, you can click all and it will show you all of the entries on one. And so this grid allows you to just view all the entries at once and score them um, pretty swiftly. To view the image enlarged, you can just click on that thumbnail image and it will open again with that enlarged image pop-up window. This is where you can view that artwork information. And then if you click next, it'll actually take you to that next entry and you can, you know, keep previewing it from there or you can return to that grid format. You can also view that same artwork information by just hovering over the top right here over this eye and that will bring up that artwork info as well. If you want to view the other parts of the application, such as the answers to those questions or the artist statements, click on this file icon on the left. That will also open, open up pop-up window and it will look kind of like we saw before from that um, slideshow view. And it'll show you the same scorecard where you can click to view form answers, view the artist statement, and this is where you'll enter any comments. So if you're using the grid view and you want to enter comments, clicking on that file icon is how you get to this page to enter those comments. You can score from here. If I click, you know, yes, I click save. Again, it'll take me to that next entry, but if I close this down, you'll see we've now recorded that score on this page. So you can just go through here, you know, keep scoring. This allows you to do it pretty quickly. Um, you can just open up if you need, view that image, close it down, score it, continue on. This is a very popular option for calls that have hundreds, if not thousands of entries, because it allows jurors to go through this pretty quickly. So um, you can enter your scores. And if you enter all of them, I just recommend making sure you click save my scores at the bottom here pretty often. Um, you can wait till you get to the bottom of the page. But again, if you might step away or if you just want to really make sure you can even click save my scores after you've updated each entry um, or maybe a few at a time. But once you click save my scores, that will actually save the scores that you've that you've clicked in these bubbles here. And you'll see now we've we've updated our total score here. Another thing you can do on the gallery scorecard, just like we did on that table of applications on the landing page for those other scorecard options, is we can sort this table by the scores. So if I go over here, sort entries by, you can actually sort them by scores descending. Um, so that will show up all the yeses first, then the maybes, then the noes. If you're doing it by numbers, it'll show you, you know, seven is the highest. So it'll show you that way. And then, you know, down. Um, you can also do it the other way. If you want to see all your lower scores, it'll actually show the non-scores first before showing you the no's. Um, so that's one way to do it. You can also filter to see maybe all of your yeses here in this filter option by clicking filter by yes, and then it'll show you those. Um, this feature here is actually really useful if you know you need to score or select a certain number of applications. For example, maybe you only need 50 entries to invite. You can sort this and then see um, at the top here, it'll count them for you. So you can see how many entries and ensure that you've scored the correct number of yeses, um, for example. And then to reset it back, you just click that reset button. Just like the other scorecard views, once you've scored all of the entries, you will know because this number of unscored will be zero and the number of scored will be, you know, the number that's the total. That's your indication that you've successfully finished your first or only round of scoring. When the call administrator receives your scores, they will sort the applications to essentially eliminate the lower scored applications. They might also have everything they need to do to invite the higher scored applications to the show. So you might only need to do this once. Depending on the number of entries though, they may need to further narrow down your selections, in which case you as the juror may need to return to this scorecard and rescore some applications. Administrators may either have you go back and change your scores from the first round to further narrow them down. Maybe you need to set some of your maybes to no's or maybe your yeses to some maybes. You can go in and change that. But they may also start what is jury round number two, which means all your scores when you come back will be blank and you will enter new scores. 
And those new scores will be used to help narrow down the selections. So let's say that's the case. Let's say you're in here for round two and your scores are blank and you need to make some new scores, but you want to be able to reference your old scores from round one. You need, maybe you need to refresh your memory on what you scored them last time. What you can do because you can't see them on this page is download the scoring history. And to do that, you'll scroll to the bottom and you will go to this option on the bottom, download scoring history. And if you're in round two, you'll see round two and one as options. What you want to do is just make sure you select the round that you need the scores from. So if we are in round two right, right now, for example, I will make sure I select round one so I can see what I scored previously. Then I'll click download scoring history and it will download a spreadsheet to your computer where you can then review the entries. It'll show you based on the application ID number or the artist name. Um, it gives you some other information to be able to re reference them. You can see what your score is for that particular entry. So that's useful if you need to reference your scores in one round while you're in a new one. And that's all you really need to know about scoring entries in CAFE. As a juror, if you need help with the CAFE system, you can contact our support team at cafe at westaff.org. We're available 8.30 to 5 p.m. Mountain Time, Monday through Friday. You can also contact us by going to this ticket tab on the left-hand side. This allows you to fill out the form and that will send us an email to the same email address. Just gets a message to us and we can help you out there during business hours. And then finally, the Help Center tab here takes you to our help resources, including the Help for Jurors guide. And that will go through all the steps that we went over today and may be helpful to follow along as you start to use CAFE if, um, for example, you might be new to the system. This concludes our webinar of How to Jury on CAFE. I hope you learned some helpful tips and feel more confident in the jurying process. Thanks again for joining us and be sure to join our next webinar next month.